right. He was never um, in a bowling league. I hate fucking uh, even bringing up our, our old uh, partner in, in radio. But uh, did you see what he posted on Twitter? No. He posted a, a short video, uh, I guess 45 seconds. Opie. Uh, from the beach in the winter, man. I was talking about that. Who the fuck goes to the beach in the winter but a mental patient? I don't like the beach in the summer. Yeah. Much less when it's cold. Fuck that. It's cold and windy and you're alone and want to walk on the beach unless you're drowning yourself. No, I, I, I didn't see the video. <laughs> yeah. So he, 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 he tweeted it. Um, but it's like we leave. The fucked up thing is we leave them alone. We leave him alone, and then he's got to pop shit like this up there just to, I, I don't know, get clicks. Here's another thing before you play it. Here's another thing. I, uh, uh, the person representing this uh, station on Twitter, <laughs> whoops, <laughs> Compound Boss, the name is, yeah. uh, has, is it has, I believe, eight, eight, between eight and 9,000 followers. Right. Not a lot of followers for somebody that's doing a, sure. a show or anything, but... It's a nice little group of people. And, uh, uh, it's an uh, army in Brussels. Right, like a Brussels army. Mm. And uh, he'll get, he'll get like the, the compound boss, will get 300, 400 likes on a video uh, with only 9,000 followers. Sure. And it was like, like okay, uh, uh, Pat Sajak. Pat Sajak had to have emergency surgery. Yeah. It was Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> he had to have emergency surgery. It was big secret. And then uh, I guess the day before yesterday or so, he announced that he had intestinal blockage. So Compound Boys... It's almost well, nothing when you're following Jeopardy. Well, yeah, yeah, that pancreatic cancer. So Compound Boys posted, I'd like to buy a bowel. Now that's fucking funny. It's cute. It's cute. <laughs> it's safe. It's funny. 400 fucking likes. And uh, Opie has a half or a quarter million followers. I swear to you, you could look over every one of his tweets. You will not find more than 15 likes on, on the most looked at fucking post. But the important thing is you're not bitter or shallow about it. You're not like, you know. I'm not. No. It's like, I'm not. <laughs> he rarely brings the I leave the shit alone. Up, but, you know. I leave the shit alone. I literally. Until asshole brings stuff up. I, I was going to delete my Twitter account uh, because of lack of likes. Uh, See? I, yeah. I, I was going to. Could you go to my Twitter? I, I was literally. <laughs> I mean, I'm not, you don't have to, yeah, you know what, it's probably, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it's I, just embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy gets like, I was in how many, how no, many followers do you I, have now? Not uh, it's 509. Oh like it's, my God. No, but it's not, it's not crazy. Like, No, Jimmy, hold on. It's way more than that. 509,000. The 512. Oh! Yeah. That's I, just from you walking into this room. Oh, I must have. See, but yeah, you, like, yeah, like, look at the light. Like, I'm, I, I never talk about my Twitter likes, but you just scroll up a little. Like, you, you see, like, there's a few. It's, it's, it's a, a, a 147. 147, 950. Yeah, like, uh, uh, oh. 000. Get the fuck out of here. 8,000. <laughs> you know, it has. You know. a simple thing of calling someone garbage. <laughs> 8,200. Yeah, that's good. See, people like Jimmy. Yes, they do. He's got, he's got followers, and they're real followers. All those round earthers are big fans of you. Yeah, yeah, that's another. They thing. are real followers because they went through a thing where they Twitter purged after a while. Oh, we yeah. all lost some. Yeah, some lost many more. Uh, <laughs> but we, I lost probably fifteen thousand people, twenty thousand, whatever it was, and you know, it went yeah. like from five oh oh whatever. To, I'm just getting back to where I was. Yeah, I lost that. I'd have eight left. <laughs> I lost 2,000. It really hurt me. It really <laughs> I like hurt me. I thought I was it. being targeted. And I think I'm being shadow banned on Instagram. Is and I'm the really? fucking resident libtard. Yeah, what are you doing? Like, and, and yeah, I'm still... You're doing so bad. I don't know. I'm fucking... What is shadow banning? What is shadow banning? I hear yeah, about like, this. Very so if like a, So what, what it was is actually happened at a comedy club the other night. A guy came up and went, I just tried to find you because he just watched the show and was like, I want to follow you on Instagram. And I was like, oh yeah, it's just Jeff Leach. And he tried to find it and he had to scroll... Yeah, the yeah. Pages, even though all the people above me, Jay Leach eight three nine, really has like twenty three followers, and he talked comes about up this. The I think yeah, yeah, you can't I, be yeah. searched. Uh, they, right. they can't. You can't find shit. I think you're, it's you're, from like your tweets and Instagram you suck. Jokes, and, yeah. uh, oh, maybe that retweets it. it. That could be it too. That's also <laughs> yeah. a factor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think I need to become funny. <laughs> that helps, I, I guess. That's what I do. Which with. sounds like a lot of work. Whenever I put and, out a terrible uh, tweet, just, I just yeah. shadow banning. I'd rather just keep putting on more jewelry every show. <laughs> I'm just disappointed in my own. Like, I mean, Jesus. Uh, I mean, I thought mean, about a 40 something thousand likes. 
<laughs> That's embarrassing. I know. And, I know. I, and it's like it's almost 24 hours, and I'm like, oh I god. Just yeah, that's so fucking embarrassing. At least you're humble about it. Though. I know, but I wasn't yeah. even thinking of it until you mentioned Twitter. Oh, like, of I'm, course. And uh, there's a video about it. What, what's the video say on the beach? Uh, that's uh, the, video. the fucking beach. Yeah, like I was saying, if you're walking the beach in January. It's such a pretentious thing to do to want to show people like, look, I walk on the beach. I'm assuming in this is January. a cold beach because if it was a beach in New Zealand in January, that's yeah. middle of summer. That's well, the, that's, that's true. Summer. Okay, on the other side, but then if you're a flat earther, that doesn't exist. Now New you're Zealand's fucked. a made-up country. I don't know how that works? It's a made-up country. You can't even fly there. The yeah. planes have to turn at fucking Greece or something. Exactly. Fucking idiots. There's a point. And there. speaking of, let's play the video. <laughs> uh, here you go. You miss me playing Candy Crush when Ant was on a rant. Yeah. Okay, pause for a second. <laughs> look, look, he gets shit. I will give this. He gets shit all the time. It's got to be, it's got to make you mental. Yeah, I, I never get stuff saying, give Opie a call. Or they, people just don't, like, maybe don't they do care. or they've been, they've been blah, but I don't, they don't give a fuck. They don't give a fuck. And like, okay, the Candy Crush thing. Uh... Me and Jimmy would just start going off on something. There's a funny story. We would do, yeah. we would do what would that called? It was called riffing, joking. Oh, our jobs, yes, right? Yes, that's right. Yeah. Right. We would be doing that. And here 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 was Opie. You'd get this. And you'd hear the candy crush. Uh -huh. On the show. On the yeah. show. Yeah. During a break that we were doing. We he, he he would just start playing Candy Crush and people I've started never noticing. Played that ever? Is it, it's just gay Tetris, right? Yeah, it's like gay, gay Tetris. I think that's what they called it involved. originally. Gay Tetris. Played it. I don't know. Unless something just needs looks... two massive video cards, I don't fucking. You never played it. Never played it. So he he used to play Candy Crush and people constantly still get on him about like, hey, why were you playing Candy Crush right. during those breaks? Well, he's got a great excuse here. Sadly, uh, sadly, I became wallpaper on my own radio show that I created and put together way back in the day. I ended up just being wallpaper playing Candy Crush because I couldn't listen to another rant about blacks. Oh, my God. Fuck well, now, in that. fairness, he's got a point. <laughs> That's uh, so far fairly valid. I just didn't have Candy Crush. <laughs> I mean, so far, it's just what it is. Yeah, if I would have ha had Candy Crush, is a fucking stupid game, so I wouldn't play it. Look, sorry, sorry if Obama was just elected president and I wanted to do a few racially based jokes about it. I would always do shit in a joking way. Regardless of how serious I felt about the sure. topic. Well, that's why we're here now. But it was, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was joking on Twitter about <laughs> And now I built an entire radio station. Right. right. Yeah, there you go. That's what happened. Well, he's blaming you because he was on Candy Crush. Well, he's blaming me, and then he blames you. Oh, all good. Well, that just sounds you know, hate Because of the it. Jews. You and the Jews. <laughs> In seriousness, though, that's very uh, oh, he's, angry. Very, like, very uh, angry. He doesn't sound like well. No. On my own show, by the way. By the way, it hasn't been his show since 1996. It was not his show since 1996, Year of Our Lord A.D. Uh, it was our show. And then yeah. when Jimmy came on board, it was all of our shows. He wasn't well, Actually, when guy. Jimmy came on board, it was Jimmy's show. <laughs> well, yeah. We know he... Uh, well, let's listen to how oh. Jimmy ruined Yeah, please. I would love to hear this. Yes, yes. how do I spoil it all? <laughs> Fuck that. You got one guy ranting about plaques, then you got another guy, you know, playing out his multiple personality disorder in front of everybody, insisting that everything has to have a character in it. And I'm sitting there going, what the fuck happened to my radio show? Ugh, radio I know. But I found Why would I do crushes, characters you know, like, on your radio show? You miss me playing. <laughs> that that you like you were like Mr. Amos. <laughs> Doing characters. I don't know so you why don't I would do trouble. characters on a radio show. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck are you talking Nick about? Ian Thompson is always with his multiple personality disorders. <laughs> multiple personality disorder because you do characters on Wait, a show. Wait, so, so is it the acting ability? Is it you? Cool. He didn't think that you thought you were Uncle Paul, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and by the way, is it you? Ranting about blacks, or me, would we do it at the same time? Would right. you be ranting about blacks, and I'd be going, "Yeah, you're right." Yeah. <laughs> at least I'm not blues. <laughs> what the uh, fuck? Are you conglomerated talking? mongrel race of people. 
<laughs> no, it was, it was, he felt left out. Yeah. He felt left out. He got a little jelly. And he would get jealous of guys having fun in the sandbox, and he would get resentful. And it's like, look, man, we all had our part that we played in it. We all had yep. our part. But this, this, this fucking childish inability to accept, and not just accept responsibility in a way like, I know I did stuff. <laughs> But I mean, for real, <laughs> yeah. understand that you sat there fucking sulking while guys were being funny. Every fucking comedian who came in noticed oh, it. Oh, everyone noticed Every it. Every comedian noticed it. Were there times where I was a cunt? Yes! Of course. And I know that in a very real way. We had very real resentment against us. It wasn't only his fault. But I never once blamed other people for my no. failures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes I'm bitter, sometimes I'm <laughs> jealous, or I'm angry, but he fucking blames everybody but himself. Everybody. I don't blame anybody else for my own failings. And there's been a million of them. They're my fucking fault. They're because of my character flaws, my lack of ability, my sabotage. They're not anybody else's fucking fault. Yeah. So stop sitting there like a fucking teenager and blaming everybody for your own shit. My fucking failures are my fault. Right. Jesus That's, Christ. Yeah, the, the blame thing, the passing the blame uh, to myself Crazy. and Jimmy. Some people don't like to be the straight man, even though that's their role. Do you know what I mean? That's that would be, by the way, if he understood that, he was a great, he was great at that. But it takes confidence to be that. Absolutely. You can't look oh, at other people. And it's also integral for the other people. Getting the, the accolades and everything. I just do neither. You could go, you could go on YouTube or a lot of other fucking social media and find O and A clips from years ago, from you know a week before I was fired. You can find the whole fucking thing out there, and most of it, most of the stuff that a lot of people go, oh my god, this was hilarious, mm -hmm. was my, my, me, Jimmy, uh, other comics that would come in. Obviously, Patrice, Voss. Colin, we would have all these guys in and be laughing our balls off, usually ripping each other apart. And he, we're he, also he, the radio show that allowed that. Not yes. just, uh, yeah, it's like yeah. so many radio shows, but basically, because he was there too, don't want the comic to appear funnier no. than the host. You it, guys embrace comics, so if you have Patrice O'Neill, Jim, Louis C.K. in the room, yeah. you can't try to one up them. You need to just enjoy the fact that you're there and you're you're with you, them. You have to be confident enough. If you're the straight guy, you're the straight man that knows uh, when to go to break, how to how to lead the conversation mm -hmm. a little bit into another direction. You have to know, like, you're not going to be the one that people go, holy fuck, that was funny today, or this guy is hilarious. Or he could never, <coughs> he could never take that. But he hates but his name is the guy the, that doesn't get the accolades. But his, but his name is the first thing that comes out right. of your mouth when you talk about the show. Exactly. He, he used to, here's one of his problems. What's wrong with that? And, 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 and I'll, it's on the check, too. I, I noticed that, uh, even when I was at NEW, before I really knew the dynamics, he would read instant feedback on the air. People would go like, Anthony doesn't need you. Oh, okay. And he would get mad about it. And I remember even being kind of new back then going, why are you reading this? Yeah. Like, like, meaning, like, what do you give a shit for your Opie of the Opie and Anthony show? It yeah, didn't even okay. occur to me. He lost faith in his own shit. And he lost faith in the fact that being the straight man is not an insult. It's a valuable thing. Absolutely. There was two versions of him. When Opie was comfortable... And having fun, he was charming, he was fucking funny. I loved that guy. I truly did. I loved working with him. He was fucking great. He gave me some of the biggest laughs I've ever had on that show. When he was insecure and he was unhappy and feeling uncertain about his place, don't blame me and Ant because you know you're fucked up. You had your own. My insecurities are my fault, but not your fault. When you had your insecurities, you were impossible because everything was a slight and everything right. was aimed at you and everything was under my... Instead of realizing that you got fucking prop. Look, my fucking shit is all my shit. Yeah. My, my, me and Opie not getting along. I blame him. He blames me. But I recognize a lot of that shit was me. Not early on. Early on when he fucking, when I called you that time, you oh, called God. me. Oh, God, yeah, yeah. I was going to quit the show. That wasn't me because he was, he was mad at me because I had, I had like teased him about the way he said certain words. He got mad. But either way, he let, like with the Letterman thing, when you guys did Letterman, it was an amazing appearance. Opie and Anthony were fucking great yeah. on Letterman. Fucking fun. People got on him because like you didn't talk enough. So then the appearance began to get soured for him. Right. He became unhappy with the appearance. He allowed these dumb dumbbells who were just trying to get under his me. skin and you made fun of him once you were joking about being quiet on letterman and after he goes it really bothered me that you said 
And it's like, you're a guy who said you studied comedy and you're mad at your co-host for making fun of something innocuous and stupid yeah. that nobody cared about. We, it was a great appearance for Opie and Anthony. Right. No one, I didn't look at that and go, gee, Anthony was great and Opie didn't say much. I'm like, they I guys did. look great, their suits look great, they were fucking funny together. That was what I thought. Yeah, yeah. So he allowed people to get in his head, and then instead of recognizing, hey, these people are kind of in my head too, you're blaming everybody else for the way you reacted. When we would start going off on something, and we knew we were just cracking each other up, laughing, and uh, you could tell it's good radio. You just yeah. know the audience is loving it, and you'd hear, you know, uh, ha, ha, all right, okay, and, and go like, uh, now he's getting mad, literally at us. You could see him getting mad at us for doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. And because he wasn't involved in it, he'd uh, start groaning and moaning. And again, playing gay Tetris. Did it look like me and Jeff right now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. He would get very angry. Um, and then he would say, well, I have to run the radio show. That's my job. And there was times where he was right. Like, there was times where, like, yeah, we got to get to break. Or we got to do it. Okay. Logistics. Fine. Yeah. And, and there's times where you're the guy doing that. And, and you know better than we. But it was this. You have that dynamic with Sam, for instance, on, on, your, on your show right now. Like I, I, Sam. As much as Sam is very, very funny on the show, but yes. both of you allow, even me, someone who's like down here in the pecking order of comedy, you allow every guest to have a chance to get their funny quips in, to you know, to run yeah. off the back of them. And then Sam does the 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 side of it that's the business side where he's going okay come on guys we're gonna rein it in we're gonna go into this and we'll yeah. come straight back and he does it with happiness and, and like an upbeat like I love that uh, that's my role yeah. Sam is more of a straight man and he's comfortable doing that he's and a then, broadcaster and you're yeah. a there you go and that's what it shows I go. like being yeah, in that yeah, role I, I like I don't need to feel like I control I like being in that role I like <laughs> reacting and firing that's what I absolutely. like to do absolutely natural in that it. video just say thank you that video is saying that like this is why I did that how about you take responsibility for the fact that you were also really resentful because you didn't feel a part of it? Right. And a, a part of it was, oh yeah, there was weird feelings between all of us, I get that. But it was more than that, it was also you felt left out of the jokes because you didn't realize how you were contributing. Me and Anthony would defend you. People would call in and attack uh, yeah, Opie. True. We were the guys fucking defending you. I was the one in interviews when people would badmouth you or what's he do? I would always defend him. Even privately, I would always yeah. fucking defend him. Never say, well, he doesn't have a role. I knew what his role was. He lost his confidence Any in what confidence he was doing. Any confidence he had in what he did, right. Well, he and lost and, it. But you and Opie were kind of friends. You go to concerts together like early on. Yeah, you, you know, got He was the reason I got hired on the show. Right. No one gave Opie and Anthony more credit than I did. When did Nobody. you feel the tension drift from him to both of you? When I felt that I never knew there was yeah, tension. You first, I'm sure. Dude, oh yeah, that was a while. Here's how I knew there was tension between Opie and Anthony. This is how dumb I am. Me, Opie, and Sandy, his girlfriend at the time, were driving to Boston to do a live appearance. I would always hang with Opie. I didn't really hang with Anthony right. back. This is like 2001, 2002. We're in the car. And he's like, yeah, I gotta sit down with Anthony tonight. We're having some problems, me and his girl. Like, I didn't even know the stuff with the girlfriend. Like, we're Opie and her didn't get along. I didn't know any of it. So Opie kind of told me that there was this tension between him and Ant that they needed to work out. And as he was telling me what was happening, how he wasn't, like, he didn't like her, I was like, ugh, that must piss Ant. But again, I didn't know Ant as well as I knew Opie. So if I had loyalty, it was with Opie. When we came back on the air a few years later, um, Opie started getting on me. Like, and again, I, I'm, I'm not saying making fun of me, but do, like kind of digging. I t and I've told this story in the book. My mother called me. She goes, is that guy not like you? <laughs> like other comedians were noticing it. They're like, what is that guy? She probably knows what that looks like. Absolutely. 100% not, not liking her son. The second it <laughs> fell out of her pussy, she was disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> my father in the balls. <laughs> she actually misdialed you that day. <laughs> but Anthony saw what was happening. I was very ready to quit the show. We were just yeah. back on satellite. It was probably early 2000. Uh, late 2004, we were back on for a month or two, maybe, maybe, four, five, maybe five or six months, 2005. You were just a few years in. No, we, no, no we, we had gotten kicked off, and we, we were, were back. Fired. We were back probably six months on the air after a two-year hiatus. Oh, right, okay. Anthony called me, and he goes, uh, look, I know what's been happening. I see you're doing great. 
I hate, and you, you unloaded, and that was the first time I knew that Anthony didn't like Opie. <laughs> yeah. I had no fucking idea, but that was a bond, because if it wasn't for Anthony, I would have walked off the show, mm -hmm. because I felt like this guy fucking hates my guts, he's the boss, I'll never win, and I didn't know what I did yeah. to him. Oh, and, and these getting, two get along so well, and I'm the odd man out. But it's like, dude, Wait, Opie, really? Opie, no. how do you not recognize that at all in yourself? Like, how yeah. do you not recognize, like, even though I've done cunty things, you think I don't know me sitting there snoring? Snarling and oh, growling of we it was all. uncomfortable. Of course it was, man. Like I look back on that and I'm like, I was very difficult. I, I couldn't hide my disgust or my we anger. All had our we all had moments, it. yeah. How do you not recognize really that part of yourself? Moments, a, lot of people, yeah. a lot of people don't uh, don't continue to grow as they get older, though. You clearly are in a place in your life. Look, just on a personal level, you know, you, your stand up deals with it. Talking about suicide, talking about giving up, you know, your addictions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You're a kind of person who wants to get better as you get older and become more self aware and develop yeah. as an individual. And Anthony hates black people. <laughs> so it's like. <laughs> Strongly dislike. It's like strongly dislike. No, no. But I mean like developing and growing and being self-aware. It's, self -aware. Like, it's all people. It's all people. Yeah, it's all people. I, I, I'll buy that. Self-awareness is not for everyone. And you can also get yeah. stuck in a stage of masochism. If that's your own depression and stuff that you're not dealing with. Yeah. Yes. You can remain a stunted. perpetual victim. Absolutely. And you can get stuck yeah, in that state. Yeah. And if he doesn't, like you're very honest. You're open about all the like shit you've done. Did he ever evaluate himself? Did he ever go to therapy? Did he, he ever did. himself? Oh, yeah. You know, I, Says, at that age, though. Not telling any secrets. He's talked about how yeah. he goes to therapy and stuff like that. I mean, that. I listen uh, to you guys every day, but I, you, know, you don't remember every conversation you ever had. Yeah, yeah. But when you would talk to him, like, one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. and this is what I'm saying, there was two versions. Because when he was comfortable and just relaxed and didn't feel threatened and didn't feel... Like, he was great. Like, he would sit there and he would talk to you, and there was times where he was surprisingly open and, 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 and kind of connecting. And, yeah. and, you know, for a long time, if there was any weird tension, Opie would be the one to call and go, hey, man, is everything cool? Like, so there was a lot of great things about it. I don't look back and go, fuck that piece of shit. Oh, no, no, like, not When at I'm all. angry, I think that way. But the reality is I loved him very much, and there was two versions of him. And I still credit him with a lot of the shit. Sure. And I don't give a shit if he resents me, because I still resent him. But I still understand what my part in it was and I also understand that there was a resentment that he had that he doesn't seem to acknowledge there's an yes. uh, it's like despite the stuff you're saying about me and Ant which in a lot of ways I'm sure you're right we were difficult to get along with there was an uncomfortability in the studio okay uh, you're not probably not wrong but at least acknowledge the fact that you felt threatened. And it wasn't because of Ant. It wasn't because of me. It was because there was two guys. Your own fucking right. Your own insecurity. Security. We were being funny. Other people were being funny and connecting. And you felt left out. And the reason you felt left out was because you lost your faith in what you were supposed to do. Whether you can admit that or not is up to you. Yeah. Well, getting in your own way is 90% of it. And <clears> I mean, that's really what it just sounds like. Yeah. Well, he also, I think a big problem he had was not being able to take the humbling of... Uh, what we had at NEW and what we were going into at Sirius uh, or XM Satellite Radio, yeah. especially at that moment. We had just fucking, oh, we were damaged goods. Yeah. We went from the syndicated O&A show on NEW to satellite radio. And when we got to XM, it was just nothing. 11,000 people. Yeah. That was our fan base. 11,000. 11,000. Sirius was already developed. Like, you guys were the sort of, like, afterthought. To well, start, XM right? and Sirius were, we were pretty separate. Actually, yeah. XM was doing better at that point oh, than Sirius was. was. Okay. The second they signed Howard, everything changed. Sirius had 600,000, and XM had, like, two point something million, I yeah, think. It yeah. was a huge, oh, wow. okay. it was a big advantage. It was a big difference. And then yeah, when they know. got Howard, things changed, and they had so many bosses go in and out. But... There's that thing you have to accept, especially in this fucking business, that you're going to have your fucking peaks and valleys. And if you can't deal with it, get the fuck out. Can I ask you, what would you, what would you like to see happen between the relationship between you guys and... I do, it, do, it doesn't matter to me. Like, I don't it's, even it's, it's, it's that far in the past, anymore. it's not even... Yeah. I literally, and this You still have like, both clearly a lot of visceral emotion relating to that, because this was someone that you... It's, it's, the, it's, the, it's the video. It's the yeah, video. Yeah. It's it's like still blame. Like it's annoying to have somebody like blame. It's not keeping me up at night. We'll go go off here and go ah fucking. Thing. I will literally forget about it on my way to the right, train. I don't. Yeah. I don't care. And uh, it sounds like something people say to go. Well, you know, uh, it doesn't bother me. I I actually feel bad for him at this point. But you know what it is. There's it's, a it, part of me that feels bad. Sorry. No, no, you're fine. I'm interrupting you. Go ahead. 
there's a part of me that just feels bad for him at this point uh, because I know he's so lost. He's alone and has no fucking prospects. And you know, it's funny, like Opie used to say yeah, once, he used to ask this question. If Jimmy was so unhappy, why didn't he oh, leave? Oh, why didn't he leave? That Fair was, question. My, he said that to me all the time, too. Money? Just leave then. <laughs> but, I mean, meaning yeah. when me and him were together and Aunt was <laughs> gone. Rose's paychecks. <laughs> I wanted the money, and I was scared to not have a job. I had a mortgage. Yeah, there you go. But I wanted Anthony to come back. I wanted the Opie and Anthony right. show. I didn't want Opie and Jim. I didn't want Jim and Anthony. I wanted the Opie and Anthony show. Those guys always made more money than me. I didn't give a fuck. I loved that gig. Yeah. I, that was why I stayed. Oh, and yeah. Opie, deep down, you know that. I always would say to you privately, whether or not you admit this, we got to get Ant. Let's do something with it. Let's get Ant. I would go to the bosses. I would always try. He'll say he tried, whatever. Maybe he did. But I, I know he and I both know the truth that when I would always, always, I was the one plugging Compound Media. I was the one trying to get you on. I was yeah. the one going on your show. And I'm not bragging. I'm saying no, that's, that's what you what do when was. you miss somebody and you want them on. Yeah. I wanted the Opie and Anthony show to come back. And at one point, a high up person at Sirius, when you were doing your gig, had said to me, do you think Anthony would ever consider a double duty type of thing? Just conversationally. And yeah. then some other stuff happened and it didn't happen. But that conversation was brought. I always held out hope that the Opie and Anthony show, and this was when me and Oprah were doing our show, right. and then when we collapsed, he said I stabbed him in the back. I was like, buddy, I was, uh, me and, when Don Wicklin was in the, in the room, I screamed, take my fucking name off this show. Oh, you know that's true. <laughs> it was very open in front of you. It was a 10 show to listen to anyway. It was, but it wasn't oh, a yeah. secret. Yeah. I wasn't hiding it. I didn't no, want to do the show. He didn't want to do it with me either. Opie would bring in other comedians because he enjoyed them more. I understood that. We, we got through the contract together. It was 50-50. He wanted to go separate. I want... Okay, but don't act like you were stabbed in the back. It wasn't my fucking fault you got fired. I have to fire night. What do you think? Scott Greenstein consults me? <laughs> hey, listen, what should we do with the guy who makes three times what you make? <laughs> what do you think he calls me? Are you fucking delusional? Do you, do, do you think that's what they do? They talk to Jim Norton to see what he thinks? They didn't tell me until Drop it was the red done. phone. We need to speak to Jim. <laughs> yeah, we need to talk to Jim. Well, it's just interesting, though, because you've pointed out that initially when he started, he started looking at, at calls and or whatever it was, Pell Talk and reading reviews. Not right? even Pell Talk. This was called Instant Feedback. So oh, yeah, yeah. On, on, oh, it's crazy. From, so instantly, he's yes. reading Instant Feedback, and he's immediately looking at all that. So all he keeps doing is he... If you look under rocks, you're going to find what you're looking for. Ah, true. So it seems that he's endlessly doing this to the point that now, it's yes. eating him alive. We all get it this. Yeah. You're right. He's get constantly it. looking for victimization in, in, in something. It's well, that becomes you don't someone's read the identity after a, after a period right. of time of doing yeah. that. You identify yourself with that. You know. Yeah, yeah. It was one of those things where, like, look, when I once when I got the boot, I, I I know him. I worked with him for so long. I know he didn't go to bat for me with management. I think he saw that as an opportunity to go finally. I'm going to be able to show, like, ta-da, here's me. This is my show without this fucking piece of shit asshole. It'll be me and Jimmy and stuff. And I'm like, I, I know, like I said, I know he didn't go to bat for me. I know you did. And all I was doing was I couldn't listen to the show. You never listen to the show. You're no, not on it. Of course anymore. not. But I was I listen to the one I am on. Go, <laughs> <laughs> never heard a minute of this. <laughs> I never heard this dribble. It, it was one of those situations, though, where, I knew what was going on, and people would ask me, have you heard the show? Did you hear Jimmy and Opie and stuff? I go, I, I can't listen to that. I go, but I know one thing. I know I was a buffer between those two as far as uh, them button heads go. And while it took probably 15 years uh, for me and Opie to have our first on-air argument, I go, they're going to have it in a matter of fucking days. Yeah. <laughs> but, but it was something, look. I carry it too. It was it's eye contact between two people. Oh, you can tell there's can unpleasant. Tell. I'm not a victim the in that. The famous text I didn't send you. The cunt won't even look, look at, at me. me. Yeah. The text you never received. Never got that one. <laughs> I inadvertently sent it to Opie. It was hilarious. Did you, what did you tell him? Uh, did you try to like back? Oh, dude, I was dancing as fast as I could. <laughs> and uh, my girlfriend. I was sending it to girlfriend. No, because I, I finally had to go. I go, well, you won't fucking look at me, you cunt. <laughs> it was the the jig was up at that point. There was no turning back. I just didn't want to drag Jimmy into it. So I insisted to him that I was sending it to my girlfriend. Right. right. So I had talked to my girlfriend about, you know, the situation we have where you won't look at me. But he would do that. Like, 
I left everything at the door unless it was something you could bring to the air and make it entertaining. Yeah. But I wouldn't take any of my personal shit in there to fuck with everybody on a daily basis. If we walked in there and saw, we would know. Opie would be all pissy. He'd have Kenny walk him to the bathroom because the mean streets of fucking XM radio hallways were very dangerous. And the second he'd leave the studio, me and Jimmy would look at it. We wouldn't have to talk. Yep. We would look at each other and go, <sighs> like, oh, it's going to be a tough day. Today, yeah. It's going to be you one of those knew. days because he's fucking pissed. He could affect... If Jimmy was pissed about something or I was pissed about something, we'd know about it, but it didn't ruin the show. It didn't affect the show. Because well, you were professional enough to go, exactly. we're, here to entertain. we're trying to entertain people. Let's and, and affect the show with his moods. And also knowing I wasn't in the, in the, in the boss position. And again, it was okay. I knew I wasn't. I wasn't meant to be in that. You know, those You're a guys bottom. Uh, yeah, in, in life. A power bottom. Yeah, so power that's bottom. a way to look at it. <laughs> uh, I'm a bottom who barks out orders, but yeah. Yeah, but taking it in the rump fruit all the same. <laughs> the rump fruit. But there were, the, you know, again, when I look at him now, it's like when he does stuff like that, it's like, it's like ugh, what the yeah, fuck are you yeah. doing? Like, yeah. he thinks that every single chip thing is about, it's like, do you, are yeah. you, I, I, I'll While break, the character itself is based completely on him. <laughs> well, it technically is. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. It's like it wasn't even a thought that that was open. Like no, I, no. I hate to break that because it's it, funny. It yeah. always makes me laugh that people say that. And if he's stupid enough to buy, and he, I, mean, I was nothing to do with him. But he thinks now it's this giant. Oh, oh that it's it's uh, it's funny because sometimes you break character. into those. It doesn't look anything like. It's yeah, just, I mean, no, no. I don't even know how to address it. It doesn't make sense <laughs> to be that when you do break into something that he said back in the day or something it's funny to me and you and a few fans sure because it's but it's not the character it's not the character itself that's a whole nother thing and the fact that you were doing like you'd say oh characters that's a schizo you know that's your maybe he's even right but that's not even insulting but, but maybe it, it is first of all yeah it's not insulting right. i've learned how to monetize my split personality yeah though. right <laughs> even yeah. my even the other voice in my head is funnier than yeah, you yeah yeah like, at least monetize <laughs> your fucking mental illnesses i have a yeah. pedophile and a guy who takes everything literally that are funnier than you <laughs> but i mean like it's like oh what do you think you did like his fucking mental illness he made millions of dollars with yeah made it with the thing that made you break the fucking pinball machine and throw right. the poker and throw some poker of the chips funniest at some things ever on the show. And... That's all your mental illness that made you. Well, well that's what my mental illness does. Make Bernie Getz almost kill you. <laughs> Again, that's what that's we all have. The shit. And please, obviously, you were an abused little cocksucker, <laughs> and your mother yelled about blacks, so you yell about blacks. <laughs> You're the adult child of an alcoholic. You have nothing but fucking issues and self hatred and doubts about your sexuality. So you're an angry, <laughs> funny genius. <laughs> I mean, everybody's shit makes us who we are as performers. Oh God. Oh my God. Oh. You uh, you should take uh, take that on the road as a psychiatrist. <laughs> you're fucking. Uh, oh, you awesome. really could. What if? <laughs> yeah, you owe him like you owe him three hundred bucks now. I think for that. Right, that was <laughs> like just a, peeled you like a banana. <laughs> we. <laughs> We would always be uh, honest, too, on the air. Like Jimmy brought that to the Opie and Anthony show. Opie and Anthony show was a very dishonest show. Not purposefully being right. dishonest or anything, but it wasn't an honest show. It's it was an element of all entertainment is dishonest. You still have to keep up the pretense of, that. Right. the show. And it right. was very bit-oriented. Right. It was very, uh, we never wanted to um, come off looking awkward right. or mistakes and things were to be, you know, just brushed over. Sure. And Jimmy brought that to the show and it was funny. It wasn't it wasn't terrible. The world didn't come crashing down if right. you fucked a word up or or you bombed with a joke and Jimmy would look at you and go, "Really? Yeah? That's good. <laughs> That's what you're going with?" That's a yeah, yeah. And and normally and early on actually was kind of a what is he doing? Oh my god. And then it just became part of the show that became very funny and that's when we started talking more about our real lives yeah. and and all that and and it, it turned the show into what made it a huge thing like that there was some things opie did not want to he was the least like and i'm not even saying it's a bad thing look if you don't want to spill your guts because it's a right. slow fucking news day that's your own business i understand mm -hmm. but the the misconception that he was being honest 
was the thing. He would try to come across like he was being as honest as everyone else. He got me to talk about Monster Rain. I've credited yeah, him for that. Monster. That was Obi. Because we talked about, he saw me do Confessing It in Montreal in 2003 uh, after we had dinner with Brother Weeze. And then he goes, I'm going to remember that if we're ever back on the air. 2004. He remembered it, and he fucking wrote it down, and I told the story, and it became this thing, and it changed me as a comic. But I've always given him credit for that. He acts like, like he acts like he's this, this victim of this evil plot, and it's like, dude, I've given you credit for so much of my. We stopped liking each other. It, it, it right. happens in life. It doesn't mean you don't look at what they did or respect. We you. stopped liking each other. We didn't want to work together anymore. I had no power over you. We stopped working together. I told you I didn't want to work with you, and you didn't want to work with me either. It wasn't like Oprah was like, come on, buddy. It was a mutual thing. We just stopped enjoying each other. Right. It happens in life, man. And the only reason I got the mornings is because he took the time off. I have a contract that says Sirius XM, the Jim Norton show, from 10 to 1. My show is going to be from 10 to 1 after his show. And then me and Sam tried out because, you know, I needed someone who could carry a show if I was away. It's a whole fucking thing. I don't want to get into all that, but blaming someone and acting like you were stabbed in the back mm. you weren't man it was it was face to face you knew i didn't want to do it we had the same agent i would be on the phone with bob i was in australia telling bob i don't want to bob's like he's the morning guy you were there now <laughs> <laughs> i'd be in on i'd be i'd be burned i'm fire little jimmy <laughs> like a little koala uh, yeah. So anyway, I don't anyway, want to get into yeah, all that, going the weeds of it, but it's, it's, like, it's like I look at that video. It's like, come on, what are you fucking? Yeah, uh, what are you doing with videos like that? Do your fucking podcast or whatever it is you're doing. I never encourage people not to listen to his shit. Right. I don't yeah. care. I think that is that was it. Have a pisser. Yeah, that was. You know what the fucked up thing is? <clears throat> it wasn't even like someone pulled a clip and said, "Hey, here's what he said." Yeah. That was his post. He post. He took that segment, and it wasn't uh, a segment. <clears throat> um, that they picked out of a longer thing. He was there more decided, to the video, by the way? Because we only watched half that video. Is there more to was his, it? Is there more to, is there more to that video? That's that's it, that's it. It. From him talking about us. Right. But he decided to post that as a way to get subs, I guess. If I, don't wanna, I don't want to derail, because this, this is great for me as an outside observer, learning all uh, of this history, because I was never party to this. It's a family that broke up. Yeah. You clearly did some great things as well. I didn't want to like, oh, derail yeah, the conversation, yeah, but you got a call 